Hello and welcome to the first episode of this tutorial series about motion graphics in media context, journalism context. In this first tutorial, we're going to start with basics. We're going to look at a bunch of techniques in After Effects that you're going to need in order to move further. And in next tutorials, we'll do things more complex. And to do so, I propose you to design a simple sequence, this sequence. Let's look at it. So you see, it's a simple animation to show the result of an election. I picked the last election that I've heard about when um, recording this tutorial, which is in Chile, where the, this dude, the left-wing candidate, won. Very simple example. It's only to cover these few tools that you're going to need to move further. Before to start, three things that I wanted to tell you about. First one, this tutorial, I believe, is more suited for journalism students or video journalists who want to learn a bit of motion graphics. If you want to study pure motion graphics, this may not be the best tutorial, but you will see. Second one, in this tutorial, I present you my way of doing things. It may not be the best, as in After Effects, there are often many ways of achieve things. And if you know better ways, do share with me. I'm interested to know. And last thing, as you can hear, I'm French, so please pardon my English. But yeah, let's kick in. Okay, so before starting, uh, if for some reason your After Effects isn't organized like this, you can go to Window here. Go to workspace and you can click to standard, for example, or default, and it should set you up pretty much like this. Now we are ready to go. So the first thing we need to do to make our animation is to gather the information. So for the result, I went on the official uh, Servicio Electoral de Chile, uh, which I believe is the official website of the election. For the pictures, I went on Wikipedia and found two pictures, which looks fine to me. Uh, and something important, I check if the licensing was all right. And on this one, it is the case. Like only thing I need to give attribution, so we, we, we will do that. Uh, so I've downloaded these pictures and they are in my download folder. So I'm going to copy this and put it in my project folder. This is mine. And we're gonna start by creating a structure for our project. So I'm gonna do a asset folder. I'm gonna do a project folder and a exports folder. And then we're gonna put the pictures in the asset folder. This is how usually I organize my project. You can, of course, organize differently. The only thing that matters is to have an organization, just so it's clear for yourself and also for your colleagues if you work with other people. Uh, so now we're good to go. I'm going to also save my project, which is unsaved at the moment. Save as, and I'm going to, boom, go to project and save it. We're going to call it election Chile version 1 and that IEP. Boom. And now we're good to go. One quick note before starting in After Effects. I'm going to try to go slow in this very first step, but if it's if I'm still too fast uh, sometimes, I put in the description a link to the very, very basic of the software which presents the software in general. So um, yeah, let's go. So I'm going to import my pictures by drag and drop these to the project panel. Boom. And now they are in the software. Right away, I'm going to do the same structure pretty much than in the Finder Assets. I'm going to do sequences because, or compositions, just to, yeah. Compose, boom. And I'm going to put the assets in the Assets folder. I'm going to create a new composition. And I'm going to select HDTV, which is the European, European standard. And boom. And the setup are fine. 1920, 1080, square pixel, 25 frames per second. And boom. And I'm going to call this... Uh, I put a hashtag. This is my sign, just to remember that it's my master composition in each project. And I'm going to call that Election Chile, for example, version 1. Boom. And I'm going to put this in composition. This is the viewport where you can see your video, your animation. Here, this is the timeline. So, and this is here that we're going to 
drag our first picture. Let's take the left dude first. And we're going to start by designing the, the thumbnail and the, the text below. So let's start by creating the border. So I've dragged and dropped the picture from the asset folder to here. I'm going to do it again, just if you missed it. Boom. And so now it's very big. So I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to open here. Let's focus here. I'm going to develop the transform tab. So transform is all the basic property, any layers in After Effects any layer in After Effects has this basic property, which is position, scaling, rotation, opacity, and anchor points. We may talk about it later. So I'm going to scale it down with the scale function. Uh, let's now right away create our border. So to do so, I'm going to go here to the rectangle tool, click on it. So I'm going to go here, make sure you don't select anything here, otherwise it's going to create a mask and this is not yet what we want to do. And I'm going to boom, draw my border over it. Looks not bad. It has created a shape layer, which is yeah the, the components that deal with all the, the, yeah, the basic shapes. And so to remove the inside, I'm going to go to here, rectangle. It has a shape. This is the shape of the, of, of the figure. This is the stroke, the outside. And you see it has parameters. We're going to check that later. And it has also a fill option. And this is what we don't want. So I'm going to click on it and delete it. And boom, our dude is back. Next thing we need to do is to change the color of this. So in my example, I arbitrarily have taken the colors from the Wikipedia page. I'm not sure where these colors come from, but let's take this again. What I usually do is I, to go fast, I, I do a quick screenshot of this. I'm gonna put it in my project in assets again, boom and import it, drag and drop in the project. Ah, there is a quick problem, boom. Put it there and it comes here. And then I can come here with the back to my shape layer. I'm going to call it border and use the color picker to boom, get the color. So it's a simple way to get a precise color from something. And for now, I'm going to do this. Next thing we need to do is the name of the dude. We're going to take the text cursor here, boom. Come here and draw a text block. Boom. And we can adjust it always later. And here I can write things. So I'm going to get the name of the guy. So it's Gabriel Boric, copy, paste, boom. And with the character panel here, if you, if you don't see it, you go to window character and you can move, like grow the, crank up the font a little bit. Paragraph in the paragraph panel, same thing if it's not there, paragraph here. And I'm gonna put center and it looks pretty fine to me. And I'm going to put this in, I think, black. So we want it to be very thick. So this looks good to me. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Maybe slightly different, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to move the position slightly to the black bottom. Um, that looks good to me. Next thing we need to do is to bring the percentage. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to write 50.87 I think let's check yeah that's it put it below boom boom and I'm gonna take the color picker and get this one not bad and put it a bit bigger and to zoom in the thing I'm gonna do command plus and I'm going to design it a bit nicely. What I'm trying to do here is to get the same spacing between here and here. 
like so the padding to get a constant padding this is often how you design things in general mm, looks not bad it's not exactly the same but it's, it will do the job as well so let's go for this i'm gonna bring select all my items command a and bring all the objects up there and to make sure it doesn't go all over the place i'm gonna hold the shift key so it snap and i'm gonna and to make sure it's in the middle i'm gonna go to here to the this icon and there are several things there are the action save things and there are also proportional grid i'm gonna use this one and i'm gonna put it roughly in the middle mm, looks fine i use the arrow keys to move the things and it looks pretty good to me and i'm gonna remove this for now next thing now we need to animate so the position we're gonna see later but we're gonna start first by animating this the text thing so it comes, you see it's got revealed just like if it was coming out from like up up there, I don't know. So to do so, I'm gonna first zoom a little bit in the thing using the, I use with the, I zoom with the viewport, huh? so it's com command plus. I'm gonna select the percentage and I'm gonna come again to use the rectangle tool. But this rectangle tool, it's a bit slightly confusing, but it's okay if you, use it without selecting anything, it do a, a shape as we did for the border. But if you select one of the one items, it's gonna create still rectangle, but it's gonna create mask. As you can see, it mask. We're gonna do something like this, just at the edges of the, of the thing, it's, it's all right. And so now we can animate the position. It's not gonna be with the transform tab so this is not the one like this is for the the whole object what we're going to do is we're going to create like something specific to the text by going to animate in the text line here and do position and this it allows us as you can see to animate the text and doesn't move the whole layer like just the text and we can move it inside the mask basically and to make an animation, I'm going to do keyframes. So I'm not going to explain what is keyframes from the beginning. Again, if you are, if you, if you have never heard about keyframes, check the tutorial in the description. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a first keyframe here. Let's say I want second, 25 frames. Let's go back to seconds here. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go to one second. And I'm going to check the chronometer here of position and come, let's say, in one, one second later and hold the, again, another key. And what we're going to do is the first position should be the one where it's hidden, right? I'm going to come it like this. And if we press space now, boom, the text appears. Let's zoom out a little bit to see how it looks like. Boom, it's okay, but as you can see, it's a little bit boring, right? Like, what is because it's a bit slow. It's slow, but it's also linear in, in the animation. And this is something that I wanted to explain you in this first tutorial. One of the thing, one of the way to improve your animation in After Effects is to smooth your movement. And this is what we're going to do now. Along this tutorial, we're going to see two techniques. I'm going to show you the manual one first for this one. So to do so, I'm going to select my keyframes and go to here to the graph editor, click on it. And here we can see a visualization of the speed of our object. You see it's at zero first, it doesn't move. Then boom, it switched to this speed and stops here. Quick note, if you don't see this graph exactly like this, you can, it's probably because here you can change from value graph to speed graph and it should should be fine so to make better velocity to our object i'm gonna click here on one keyframe and grab this yellow thingy here and do and bring it low so it creates like a, a sort of bezier like this like uh, sorry a sort of gaussian curve and still do it a bit strong and let's see how it looks like now Ah, much nicer, right? So as you can see, the, it, the deceleration is smoothened a lot. Let's, for the example, let's push it to the maximum. 
Yeah, now it's almost too fast, but it's it's not that bad actually. Let's keep it like this. And I'm gonna click back here on the graph editor to go back to our keyframes. And to get a and I'm gonna see close this for clarity. Next what we're gonna do is I think we are ready to duplicate our uh, composition. So to do so, of course we could just select all of these, duplicate, it would create a bunch of layers and we could move it there and work it out. But this is not how we're going to do. So I'm going to delete that. We're going to do what we call pre-compositions. It's basically, what is it? It's basically a folder. And to do so, I'm going to select all my items, right click on it and go here to pre-compose. Boom. We're going to name it candidate one, boom. As you can see, it has wrapped everything in one layer, but if we double click in it, boom, inside we still have, we can still change all our parameters and we still have all our animations, but in the main composition, we have only one thing, which is gonna be much easier to like move it around and animate it. We use it all the time in After Effects. So I'm ready now to duplicate my candidate card, so I'm gonna do edition, edit, sorry, duplicate, which is also command D, and now I have two layers and I can move one, I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock it again, and I'm, it, I'm gonna put it here on the side for now. Select the two, bring it into the middle, roughly, we're gonna place them fine later. So we have duplicated the compositions, but something very important to understand is this is two instances of one composition. What does it mean? It means if, if I go inside and I, let's say I modify something, so let's just do a, whatever, like a, a random shape over it, and I go back to the main composition, boom, as you can see, it changed both of them. So to avoid that, first I'm gonna delete the sh this weird shape. I'm gonna go back to the main composition. Actually, yeah, I forgot to show you this quick shortcut I'm gonna use for the for what's coming next is this is you can have access to the tree of your composition. So we are in the the child here, candidate one, and I can go back to the master composition, boom, and go back here. So to have two distinct copies of our uh, card, what you need to do is to duplicate it also here in the library. So I'm gonna do edit, duplicate also, command D, this is what I'm gonna do also next, command D, and I'm gonna replace one of these, I'm gonna replace the second one, which is this one, by this one. And to do so, I'm gonna make sure two, the two ones are selected. I'm gonna change the color here just for clarity, put it in second position. And I'm gonna drag and drop it over it and release by, but click in the Alt key on the spot, boom. And now this is two distinct copies. So if I go here and I do the weird shape and go back, boom, this is two distinct copies. So this is good. So now we can prepare our second version. So what we're gonna do is to take the second picture. So what we're gonna do is take the second picture, drag it over here. So it's very big, I'm gonna put it in the tree here, I'm gonna put it below and I'm gonna scale it down. I could develop here with this cursor and go to transform, blah, blah, blah. But to go faster, I'm gonna press the S key, which reveals the scale position. And I'm gonna scale it down, boom. Tac, 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 and I'm gonna move it like this. Uh, it's gonna be slightly small. Boom, not bad. And I'm gonna place it, and this is good. Problem is we need to uh, reframe the, the picture slightly. So to do so, I'm gonna take the mask tool, which is the same as the rectangle tool, but by selecting the picture, and I'm gonna come here, draw a rectangle here, and it's gonna do a mask, boom. Perfect. Uh, below we have one picture, let's see, and we don't need it because this is the second dude, so I delete this one. 
and I'm going to update the information here. I'm going to take back the arrow here by pressing the V key, boom, and get the information. So the informations are right here, Jose Antonio Cast, and I'm going to double click on it, paste it, perfect. I'm going to update as well his score. Uh, it's, let's check, this is Wikipedia, let's check if it's the same. 44.13, this is great. So I'm gonna double click here, paste it, perfect. And we need to update the color as well. So I'm gonna take back my screen cap, scale it up a little bit. And then I can come here, double click and boom, boom. So that's good. Now I won't need this anymore and we need also to update the border. So I'm going to come here, develop, content, rectangle, stroke, and there is a color, boom, boom. Perfect. Let's go back to the main composition and see how it looks. And this is exactly what we want. So that's great. Let's look at what's next. Let's check that everything went fine. So we have the animation and yeah, that's very good. Like it's exactly the same animation, same composition. This is perfect. That's why it's good to first design one and then duplicate it because then you get the same exact motion. So that's great. Uh, next thing we need to do, we have our two cards and we need to animate these. Uh, we're gonna also do the background. I'm gonna do that right now. Why not? I'm gonna, so to do so, because this is black for now, I'm gonna do right click here and do a new solid. Boom. And I'm gonna call it background and white is good. So I'm gonna press OK and it creates a, a new layer which is a solid and I can, I will put it below. And what I'm gonna do as well is to lock it here because I, yeah, I don't want to be able to select it here, you know, like. Next thing, we're gonna animate the two guys from one, from the two sides. So, uh, compared to the reference, they are slightly big. So I'm gonna scale them down a little bit, press S and move the scale a little bit. And I'm gonna place them in, a, in the middle. So I'm gonna open here the grid. Sorry, I pressed, uh, I clicked here, boom. And so how I, mean, how I do usually, first let's place them vertically. So this is not bad. I take one, two, one, two, it's slightly. To make it in the middle, I'm gonna boom. Yeah, this is not bad. I look at the space between here, between here, between the line and this, and between that and this, so that's good. And horizontally, I'm gonna do a bit the same. I'm gonna start them maybe from the beginning boom and press one two three four five six seven i press the shift key and the arrow key one two three four five six seven and yeah and it looks slightly off so i'm gonna yeah boom This is good. We're going to do as well the title, which is here, 2021 Chilean general election. I'm going to do a new text and I'm going to turn on for reference the title safe. I'm going to do this like this, for example, boom. And I'm going to, I think I copied paste it from here. I'm going to take this boom, boom. Uh, let's do a bit the same style. So, uh, so the font should be a bit smaller. I think it should be in capital letters. And I think I cranked up the, this quite a bit, I think 500 and put it smaller. Let's remove this. Not bad. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Let's put it in black and this is not bad. It's not centered properly now. So I'm going to take all my things and move it down a little bit. 
oh, and there's a problem. We don't see the name of the guys anymore because it's white on white, I think. Yeah, the text is white, so I'm going to put it in black here. To see what's going on, I'm going to click here on the transparency button and boom, we can see that we're good. Same thing on the other guy. Turn the transparency, select the layer, put it in black, boom. That's not bad. I think they were slightly bigger, so we're going to do the same. We're going to move back to 80 maybe. Composition looks all right to me. So next thing we need to do now is to animate the position of this. I'm going to start by animating this guy first and I'm going to reveal the P, the position parameter with the P shortcut. And I'm going to do a keyframe. This is the last keyframe. Let's start by only this guy. So I'm going to turn this one off and we're going to take it back outside. I'm going to press shift to go a bit faster. Let's put it, yeah, let's, let's put it, let's the edge of the layer here like this. And now again, we have the blocky animation problem. We could do the same. We could do the layer and put it there. But I want to take the opportunity to show you the tool that I use every day since 10 years. It's a small plugin called Ease and Wiz. And what it's going to do, it's going to help you to make nice movement uh, in just one click in After Effects. So you can get it from this website, aescripts.com, and you can you need to register. And it's a name your own price plugin, which means you can get it for zero dollars but if you like it get like pay for it a little bit so it helps the people who makes the this plugin and it's uh, yeah it's important once you have downloaded it it's gonna arrive in your download folder and click here and to install it i'm gonna select all these files actually i don't need the pdf i think so i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna go to my after effects applications after effect folder Scripts, Scripts UI panel, and I'm going to paste it there. It's, yeah, me, it's already there. It's going to ask you your admin password. Press OK. Don't forget to restart After Effects. And once you have restarted, you will find it in Windows here and Ease and Wiz. Boom. It's going to be here. So you can dock it, for example, yeah, next to here, for example. Perfect. Boom. And how does it work? I select the keyframe and I select Expo, for example, which is one method and I click apply. It's gonna, this gonna turn to red, which means there are a bunch of codes lines here, but we don't need to understand what it's all about. All we need to do to know is look at it and it's, it, you see, it makes the smooth motion in just one click. It's slightly too fast, so I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. Yeah. Perfect, very nice. We're gonna adjust it, but it's very nice. Ease and with has different uh, motions, like you can experience, play with it and see what it's, it's doing. This is the strongest one, this is the lightest one, I think. It has also a few funny ones, like this one, elastic, which need, you need to use with out, boom, and it makes whoo, like an elastic effect. You have also a bounced effect that, yeah, that makes boom bouncing which sometimes is useful and but we're going to use expo most of the time me, me i use this one like all the time so this is good we are ready to bring the second guy so i'm going to turn it back on here by clicking on the eye and so i'm going to do a bit the same i'm going to reveal the p position i'm going to click on the chronometer and i'm going to to make sure i'm make sure you are on the same exact that your keyframes are aligned and so to do so you can hold the shift key and it's going to stick to it. So I'm going to do the same here, shift and boom, bring it away. I'm going to put it at the edge and select the keyframes and apply. And what it's going to do, boom, with the same motion. So that's good. In our example, what we got is there is a slight delay which makes it slightly more dynamic so I'm going to do the same. I'm going to select the keyframes and move this a bit further like this. So let's see how it looks. Yeah, perfect. Something that is slightly strange is that the, the text is, uh, the, uh, sorry, the, the, re the result is getting down 
a bit in the same time and this is not really what I want so I'm gonna go inside each precomp reveal the by pressing U I'm gonna reveal all the keyframes on these layers and I'm gonna push it one second away I think let's try let's put it at two seconds yeah and let's do the same on candidate U put it at two seconds and let's see how it looks now back to the master yeah they get off at the same time so I'm gonna do again the same thing so how many frames there is like one frame two frame three four five frames I'm gonna do a slight offset between the two text as well so I'm gonna go inside candidate 2 and move it 5 frames away to do so I'm gonna use the alt key and press right 1 2 3 4 5 and what it's doing let's look at it it's boom it makes a slight delay I think it makes it cooler we start to be close to the final result right let's look at it yeah, we need to focus on the winner. That's the last thing to do. And to do so, we need to cover the last very important thing in this tutorial, which is how to move in a composition, how to navigate, how to zoom, how to zoom out. So I'm going to tell you about two techniques. The first technique you can use is the camera object here in After Effects. If you right click here, go to New and Camera. And what you can do is then act as a camera and move thing but it has a, a lot of limitations especially what for what we want to do which is 2d animation and i'm not gonna develop this method too much because i believe it's not really relevant for what we're gonna do and what i want to present you is me the tool that i use every day and extensively and it's called none object and to explain you how it works let's go quickly to the real world so let's say this is our object right what is none object none object is basically something so in real life i'm taking this i'm gonna attach my object to the thing and what we're going to be able to do then is to by moving the null moving all the object together it's pretty simple right so back to after effects so to do that i'm gonna do right click here go to new null object and it creates like this. This is just a reference visual, but it's not gonna show up on, on the final uh, frame. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attach all my parameters to the null. And to do so, I'm gonna use the parent link, which is this column here. If you don't see it, it's I think it's one of these two right here, boom. So I'm gonna select all my items. I'm gonna take the spiral tool right here and boom plug it to the null i'm gonna actually rename it call it a guide and i'm gonna put it yellow <clears throat> and now what i can do is to turn on the scale turn on the the position as well with shift p click on the chrono this is the initial position go a bit further do keyframes again and I'm going to zoom into the winner a little bit, maybe not too much. And this is not bad. And right away, I'm going to apply my favorite plugin, Ease and Ways, boom, and boom, perfect. So boom, boom, and zoom on the winner. We can put it even a bit further. Boom, let's look at if, it, if it's good. Yeah, the last thing we need to do is to fade this guy a little bit. I'm gonna take candidate two. And so during the, mo the movement, we want to fade away the guy. So I'm gonna hold the T key, transparency, click on the T key. I'm gonna click on the chrono, move forward and move it to, let's say 25%. Yeah, not bad. Last thing we need to do is to put the credit here. Let's do that. So I'm gonna take the tool, text tool again, come here into a text box, credits. We're gonna uh, align paragraph to the left. We're gonna go to copy paste, chick, 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 chick. Biblioteca Nacional, 
and paste it there. It's a little bit big right now, so let's put it smaller. Let's put it lighter as well. Same, I'm gonna try to get a nice padding. Same length here, same length here. Nah, it's okay. Yeah, not bad. We can also fade it away a little bit because we don't need to put to. We don't want like the viewer to get his attention. Uh, Caught by this. I won't forget to attach it to the camera, I mean to the guide, sorry. <laughs> and so now it follows. And boom, this is exactly what we wanted now, I think. Brim, awesome. Last thing now is to export our animation. So to do so, I'm gonna come on the timeline here and adjust the this bar. Boom. I'm going to leave a bit of empty space at the end, a bit at the beginning as well. So that's great. And then once you have settled that, you can also use the B shortcut for in and N for out. And then you can go to file, export, add to render queue. It's, so it's opening a new tab. And what you need to change here, me often I don't touch the render settings, the first one, it's fine. You need to change the output module. Click on the, the name here and make sure you are in QuickTime, RGB, format option, go to Apple ProRes 422HQ, which is a industry standard. Set the location for the render file. We're going to go to my folder, export, boom, and I'm ready to click on render. Boom, awesome. So you see with these few tools, null object, is and with, design some visuals, you're going to be able to tell a lot of stories. So yeah, that was the basics that I wanted to present to you. Again, it's my way of doing things and maybe there are better ones, other ones. So yeah, take it as it is. And uh, yeah, see you in the next tutorials.